Right, it's a real pleasure to be joined on the show by one of the pillars of um, the local music scene. Uh, it's broadcaster, DJ, presenter, all round amazing person. It's Steph Newenhouse. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm blushing. <laughs> Can you just walk around with me and do that everywhere? I mean, you, you, uh, my, my, I will, but I do have a very high fee. <laughs> it's about 40 grand a year, and I'll do it. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I mean, what a bargain. What but I, a bargain. Only work, I only work between nine and I'd say 3 30. Okay. <laughs> They're my hours. Oh, it's really weird, isn't it, when someone introduces you and you hear like what job you do or something, you're like, oh, is that me? It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Well, because I mean, this, we're going off topic already, but I never like talking about myself in a positive way. Like, yeah. Just, like, when somebody's like, oh, yeah, you do this, this, and I'm like, Mm -hmm. no that's not me that's why I do. it's weird that I'm exactly the same and I'm like oh that that person sounds that's cool oh that's me I, uh, really <laughs> that person sounds cool that can't be me <laughs> that's not me I don't remember the last time I was cool true story there's I am absolutely not cool by the way <laughs> right I've got some quick fire questions just to kick things off so I okay. can got you know for people that don't particularly know uh Steph behind the mic um so I always, I always find this really weird with interviews because like, it's almost like speed dating. You just go, question, question, question. Oh, hell, hell. So uh, that's what I've done. I basically just got like some, some questions for you. So uh, what was the last album you brought or streamed? Oh my gosh. Can I look on my, can I look on where I'm listening on yeah. streaming? Okay, hang on. Hold, hold the line caller. Oh, it's, it's, a, to it's a toss up between um, Lil Sims Sometimes I might be introvert yeah. and Sam Fender, 17, 17 going, under. going under. Yeah. Yeah. Both great albums. Yeah. He's also it's just been good. announced for Victorious. That's pretty awesome. Oh, I don't think I knew that. Has that come out today? Well, yeah. It's just been, it's been announced this morning. <laughs> oh, Steph's on the ball with music in the area. <laughs> good. Yeah. He's, yeah. If he's a headline on the Sunday night, it'd be good. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. Yeah. I love that. Right. <laughs> so, that was, so yeah, two very good albums there. What is your favourite genre of music? Do you know what? I, oh, I'm really, <laughs> really bad at these quick fire, by the way. Sorry. I think since I started doing more of the DJ and stuff, I do really like house and disco. Like if you put on a record that's got a bit of a, or even like piano house, that's got a bit of, yeah, I love a bit of piano. I've actually been learning piano again because I did it at school and I've been trying to do it again recently and it's really fun. And yeah, just that kind of music you can't help, but it like lifts you a bit, yeah. I think. So house house piano. Yeah, a bit, yeah. Of, bit of that. Yeah. Well, also, one of the next, well, it was a few down, but the one of the quick fire questions was, can you play an instrument? Uh, so we're going to go with piano. I mean, ask my boyfriend, he'd be like, no, she can't play. <laughs> I mean, I've got a piano, um, and I can play Coldplay, The Scientist. That's about it. That's good going. It's like th four, three or four chords, just uh, repeat. Uh, yeah. Repeat. <laughs> it works. But I also play drums, so that's that's my instrument. Then everything else that you actually have to have a tune for, um, not so well. Oh, no, come on. Drums is good. Drums is oh, a yeah. really good instrument. I don't go. I, I love drums, but, you know not much of a tune compared to like a guitar solo is it <laughs> well i mean some of the i've got a friend actually who does who plays drums in um in a local band actually shout them out uh summer high they were called they've got a new name oh gosh hang on <laughs> blood red sky i think it is now <laughs> sorry sorry rob uh but he's really into drums and like yeah it's amazing that world like he'll go on these things where there's like exhibitions and stuff where people do like drumming stuff sounds great i oh, see so this is again we're going we're just gonna go off we're Sorry, gonna on a yeah. topic it's fine when i was i think 14 or 15 my favorite band of all time is radiohead like i'm obsessed with radiohead and their drummer um did a, a a drumming clinic in a church in like some random village um up towards london it's where they recorded like the strings and stuff for the pyramid song so it was phil Selby. Oh just sat there with a drum kit. Then we all had to bring our own drum kits. I was like 14 or 15 at the time. So there was like 50 drummers in this church. And then we were all just playing along to like Radiohead songs and stuff. 
it was one of the most bizarre experiences of my life but it was awesome oh my i've got to tell uh, i've got to tell boyfriend dave because he loves radiohead with a passion so yeah, yeah that will be i mean that that's amazing so it's actually their drummer yeah in a church wow yeah it was about it must i must have been about 15 because i was still at school so it's got to be 15 16 17 years ago but it was, yeah it was the church where they recorded a bunch of strings for like the pyramid song and and the amnesiac album they're like yeah we'll do a drum clinic that it was just like like in the back of enemy one week it would just said like phil selway drum clinic and i was like okay mom can i get a lift to <laughs> some some random places like two hours away with a drum kit that's so good i love that that's like that's that's history like that's only gonna ha happen once isn't it that's so good yeah. i don't even know why that happened all right um i reckon i know the answer to this next question what was the last gig you went to wet leg at the joiners yep i thought it was <laughs> <laughs> i didn't actually see you there but are we are we were there yes do you know what i was the first time i'd done it there actually again getting in doing a bit more of the DJing out live so I was actually by the side of the stage and once you're actually in that bit because it was a, a sold out show you're you not move. you're not moving you're yeah. not moving like you're literally there and you're planted for the whole the whole thing yeah <laughs> which was amazing <laughs> yeah it's, I mean I love the Jordans and a sold out gig at the Jordans is just something special because it's just like everyone is just hello oh, hey <laughs> yeah I know it's yeah it's yeah it's very intimate isn't it and like for like there's a girl i got chatting to at the door actually randomly and she just said with wet leg you just think the kind of stages they're going to be playing next year and onwards and we've got to see them in this this kind of venue independent venues really great yeah i mean one of the weirdest not like the weirdest gigs but like when you think back how big they are now was um the hunter so i saw oh, them oh my gosh yeah. yeah saw them at the joiners but because they came and they didn't even do like a live session for us and we went and watched the gig and i heard i'd heard them that's why we got them in but there were songs that weren't even released and people were singing along like it was insane like people learned the words from Whoa. youtube videos i was like wow they just watched live gigs and had learned the words and i was like this crowd is intense like <laughs> they they did have a really do you know that i think there's something going on with that band because i got to see them at reading and i remember i had i was listening to they did have a bigger album of album that was really big didn't they that every, yeah the, and i can't feel bad i can't remember the name of it now but i i remember loving it but like weirdly loving it like i feel like i'm 14 again what's going yeah. on what have they put in this music <laughs> oh my gosh 100 it was called 100 yeah yes i remember listening to that a lot but but like obsessively listening to it so i can see how they they there was something going on there yeah they tapped into it to a they tapped into market. something yeah I love them. Mm. Um, right. The last quick fire question or quite slow fire question. Um, what is one of the best songs ever written? Doesn't have to be the best, just one of the best. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is really quick fire. And oh, I feel like I should say like a classic, but the person that's come into my mind that I again became weirdly obsessed with was Maggie Rogers. And I really love her lyrics and um I think it's Alaska. Yeah, I'm gonna say, but I don't I don't know because I feel like there's probably something a classic one that I've not thought of. Um oh, this is what I love about because because music is always there's always gonna be changing and there's always yeah. like my top like ten songs of all time is constantly changing. Like Yeah. You're just like, oh, this is a really good song, but so is this. And that also how would you define what's the best? Because there's like different genres and like different moods and things as well. I always find. I was going to say, actually, the, you're absolutely right. Because the other one that's just come in my head of more recent times, um, Sam Fender's Spit of You. Oh, yeah. That makes me, that makes me cry. Every time I listen to it, I'm, I'm tearing up because that lyric, um, I can talk to anyone, but I can't talk to you, is so powerful. But it's like, so succinct in what it's saying it's so kind of um he's saying so much in so so few words really yeah. that song is really special i think so, yeah and also because there's always constantly new music so there's always gonna be something that come out that could be better because like you said the power of lyrics i mean i, I know yeah. i talk about this man probably way too much but frank turner a yeah. wave across a bay because obviously it's written for scott and he um you know died by suicide and, and i only met scott once and he was like 
he was like a ball of life when I met him and interviewed him and he was like wonderful. And then it's the line in Frank's song, which is, um, it, uh, I even get like teary saying it, but it's like the one it's like, um, uh, the, the, before you hit the water, that there was a sense of peace and understanding and the light in your eyes. He goes, it's just a beautifully way that he's written it. Because like, when I, I asked him about it, he was like, I have to kind of think. Scott did that. He made that choice mm. and that he had to be at peace with himself to do it. And he goes, that's how I kind of like, deal with it that line i think is in, incredible because yeah the whole the, the, the whole obviously that that sort of situation is such a powerful thought anyway mm. I, don't, I, don't, I always find it difficult to talk about because it's, it's, it's a, raw isn't it it's yeah. that like raw emotion and it's it, it's how we all relate to each other and that's songwriters are so clever at that aren't they at, at yeah. putting that into words and putting that into song it's incredible because mm. that that's always fine with music is 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 I'm hoping you're the same because you. I think you're just, just as obsessed with music as me. But like, pretty much any mood, I can find a track that kind of either like helps me stay in that mood if I'm like happy and like, or if I'm like feeling like down or something. I can get a song that can like maybe pick me up or kind of just like, I can kind of yeah, that's how I'm feeling at the moment. I know what that guy's talking about. I know what they're, they're singing about. Like, there's always a, there's always a song for every moment. I think that's so true, and it can you can kind of travel with that music in that mood. And like you say, take it to where you want to go. Or sometimes, let's be honest, if you're in a particular mood and you kind of want to indulge in that feeling <laughs> a bit more, if it's a bit of a, you know, like there's that kind of music as well, I think. Yeah. Obviously, um, you you are the, like, the what, like I said at the start, you're one of the pillars of the local music scene in the South, obviously with the BBC Institution show. And I kind of, I've been trying to work out a way of wording this question because I kind of, do you feel like a proud sister with like some of the acts you supported from like day dot and now playing main, main stages at national festivals, national radio play? Obviously, um, Jerry Williams has just been used in Afterlife, which is insane. Like, is there a part of you that's like, yeah, that was, I was there first. It was, it was me. Do you know what I love, Simon? I love that you said sister because in my head, I'm like, I'm the mum. I feel like a mum. I didn't want to say that because I was like, it's a bit rude because I'm older. <laughs> well no do you know no, do you know what I said it on air the other day because I was talking to someone else about introducing and I was like it kind of was like giving birth but obviously like a bit different obviously very different um but we we actually launched the show on Solent so it didn't have its own introducing show before that it was coming out of Brighton and it covered um, not only Hampshire, Dorset and the Isle of Wight, but also Surrey and Sussex. And it was in with the South show. So within like an hour or two, they had to cover so much ground, yeah. literally. So, um, yeah, in 2016, they said, let's have our own show. And yeah, we literally launched it. So it, it, although we had a kind of, uh, obviously we had the support, the fantastic support of introducing us centrally and across the UK. And there's a kind of format, you're kind of feeling your way into what, what is this going to be? And who's going to upload in our area and what's it going to sound like and who can we support and yeah if, I feel incredibly proud and yeah I actually don't know where the time's gone either it's really weird I don't know <laughs> like are there are there certain acts like when you first hear the tr like a track and you're just like this is really good like it's not it's not there yet but these these guys or this person is gonna be something special I think so I think there's a mix sometimes you think like you think that straight away and then there's some that surprise you so there's some way you'll go oh yeah that's that's really exciting and I really like wet leg is a good example they uploaded in 2019 and girlfriend you can hear it's wet leg but it's way more lo-fi and that was the only track they uploaded and then fast forward and they're releasing Shays Long with a massive record label so it's sometimes hard to hard to tell uh, and then there's others where they graft and they they don't release too much but they release a lot and they work really hard at it and then you see it pay off after a while and there's some that that and and also I always I'm putting this question out there like what does pay off mean like if you're enjoying making music do you want do you even want to it to go onto a massive platform and like get signed and stuff like that or are you doing it just because you love doing it do you like just going out and performing it and getting it out to a few more people do you know what I mean like what's the measure of where you want to go with it yeah if that makes sense yeah 
I always thought when when I was in bands as a kid, our goal was always, yeah, it'd also be nice to be like playing Wembley, like the Foo Fighters and things like that. But the, the goal was always to, if you could make a living, if you could sustain a living from a creative industry, from a, a creative career that you love, that, that was what we always wanted. I mean, we obviously didn't because we were awful, but that's what we wanted. <laughs> You're doing it now. You're doing creative stuff with music. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, I think that I think I think that's quite a nice benchmark to use. I think quite a lot of bands, especially I've spoken to, have kind of said, "Yeah, we just want to be able to. We want this to be our lives. We don't want to have to, like so many bands do, have mm -hmm. second jobs. You know, constantly going back and forth. I mean, I know that, I know some bands who are signed but still also have second jobs because they still don't get paid enough from that, which is just it's crazy. Do you know what I had a, a fascinating chat with? coach party we did this so uh gonna get the plug in introducing live we do each year and that is like um it we did it in in real life at tobacco dock one year that feels like hundred thousand years ago but it wasn't it was only a few years ago uh but now it's obviously like virtual and we do master classes and stuff and we record uh we, we chat to artists around certain themes and then put together like a, a master class that goes out and the rest of the country also do these masterclasses anyway long story short we were talking about gigging and I just asked coach party about the money side of things I felt really cheeky because I don't normally ask questions like that but I was like how does it work are you making money are you making more money from releasing music or gigging now I mean that might seem like an obvious question and an obvious answer but um how's the what, how's the finance side of things looking and they actually said it is like a balance sheet like a profit and loss and they have to look at how much they're paying out now and when and then they'll find out down the line whether they've made anything from it but you know selling some merchandise on a night will make a difference and the uh, lead singer Jess was like how I she thought at that point at the point they're at now they'd already just be doing that as full-time jobs but doing the band as, full, as a full-time gig and that's not the case yet so yeah, yeah it's it's really interesting isn't it and I, I always find it strange because obviously wet leg are, are kind of like one of the exceptions you can't they've just exploded like yeah. obviously it was 170 i think it's 176 days from their first single to when they were on a late night show in the states like it's ridiculous like there's not yeah. many people that kind of explode like that and so many people yeah it's just how it is weird how we kind of, I don't know, I think as like punters as such, we kind of just accept that music's always just going to keep coming. We don't really appreciate the fact that, oh, they might not keep going because they can't because it's, it's they're not getting paid for it. And we kind of, well, but we want it because we like it. <laughs> yeah, that is that is such a good point, actually. There was a really good article on um, BBC News the other day about artists either being independent with an independent label diy doing it themselves or with a major label and the different the kind of pros and cons of each of those um avenues really and there's a bit more of a trend there's a way more of a trend going towards like independent and diy and there's lots of advantages to that but then there's also downsides as well and there's good things you can get from being with a major but then you see a lot of big pop stars moving away from major record deals recently i feel like you're seeing we're seeing more of that yeah yeah it's just it, it's, a, it's a mind-boggling industry when it comes down to like the numbers involved and things yeah and, and there's nothing it'd be good if like that was kind of talked about a bit more probably for bands and artists that are starting out as well yeah to know what where they can go and what they can can get because obviously yeah. you kind of you just assume or at least I just assume with like a major record label, that's it. You've got the whole package. There's people there and you could just go sit in a studio for nine months. just going, yeah, let's just create music. And then they'll just do all the work for us and tell us what to do. And we can go out and just play, but it's not, that's not the case. <laughs> I mean, I know there's, that. <laughs> yeah. There's so much legal stuff involved, isn't there? My, my granddad actually but, uh, bought me a book and it's like, Oh, I can't remember what it's called but it was massive and I took it on holiday and it was like reading like a textbook. It was like how to make it in the music industry or something like that. And it, the stuff that the contract side of things and all the legal side of things is so complicated. Yeah. And I also, I always hate to say it, but I, I, I always think with, especially with creative jobs and like the creative industry as a whole, there is an element of luck. 
because there are so many people that are so talented and work so hard that just never make it. And it's not because they've not worked hard enough or, or they've, I do think it's sometimes right place, right time, right opportunity. Cause like yeah. you've only got two hours a week to play music, you know? So that, and you get more than two hours worth of music each week. So that becomes almost impossible to keep up just with your show. So, yeah. you know, that's an opportunity that someone might miss out on just because there isn't enough time for them. It's, 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 it's crazy, but it's, I think it's just the way we are. It is. And it's not, it's not a reflection on how good you're like, you could be really good and not getting played, like you say, because of the time limitation. And I mean, I'll always be an ad advocate for BBC introducing, but there could be more of that. I mean, it could have more airtime. It could be even, you know, take up there was talk I think at one point of taking it onto TV as well and I'd love to see that you know like a kind of Jules Holland style that would be amazing sort of that Especially would be brilliant BBC Three is now back that would be perfect for yeah. it yeah like, Jules Holland style introducing that would be amazing that actually would be amazing wouldn't it because he already plays bands that have come through you start to see more of those acts I think they do like one on each show so yeah that would be that would be great and you don't and I always say as well you don't I might be wrong so tell me if I'm wrong on this because I probably am but um do you see this <laughs> just saying things that aren't true do you see this in um commercial radio because I don't think I can't think of anywhere on commercial radio where there's where you cannot oh no there might be a few actually where you can upload music and it's like a kind of there used to be one on what was Eagle I think it's hits radio now yeah I, greatest hits yeah I don't think I'm not aware of any sort of major networks too. i know like obviously crystal tides and a few friends of mine have been on like radio x and things like that of course, but i think yeah. that's more down to them having the knowing the people at radio x and things like that rather than there being a, a set sort of way in as such i don't, I don't yeah I, I think bbc introducing is is immensely unique in, in what it does and i think it's incredibly powerful i, I know um oh i've forgotten his name oh is it john do you think of john kennedy no no. Oh yeah, John Kennedy. He's on. He's a radio. He's amazing as well for supporting acts. But again, he's only got a limited time, and there's only limited yeah. resources for the amount of emails and stuff you get. So was it? Um, who was the? Ah, oh, what? Why are all these names disappearing out of my head? The really old Radio One DJ who was like a pioneer, John. Oh, John Peel. John Peel. He had to yeah. build an extension on his house just to house the vinyls and CDs that he got sent. He never wow. listened to them all because he never had a tough enough time, but he tried. <laughs> I, he's an inspiration I remember reading his book and like it's just incredible like he was so dedicated to it he's so dedicated to listening to everything and giving people a chance and giving different genres an opportunity and a chance yeah he wasn't afraid to to put things out there but I like that yeah it's, it's, it's crazy because yeah I think BBC issues especially the, in what how many it's on how many stations what seven to 18 there's 18 different like groups of or something there's the 39 country. local stations, but then you've got all the national shows as well. So there's probably over 40 introducing shows. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. And that's two hours a week. So that's 80 hours a week of unsigned music. And normally different acts on every show as well. So it's like, yeah, it's a lot of acts getting, getting something. And it's for free as well. <laughs> it is for free. It is for free. And it's always on your local station on a Saturday night, but you can listen on BBC Sounds. Yeah. Just say. <laughs> well what was it um if somebody is in a, in a in a band or an artist and they do want to get involved in bbc introducing how do they upload so you go to bbc.co.uk forward slash introducing and the website is really user friendly like there's also do you know with a bit oh god I'm, i love stuff like this I'm, don't don't judge me i love an faq so there's a whole there's a frequently frequently asked questions section guys um it's really cool I absolutely love it um so <laughs> on there is just it's so handy they've put literally everything on there any question you might have because there's loads of questions like will I get paid for my music being played um how old um like what's the age limit and stuff like that and all loads of different questions so there's all of that on there and then you just literally click on upload create your profile give us a bit of information about yourself it doesn't need to be loads but a nice bit of biography about like highlights of a bit like highlights of, of what you've done so far and what you're about and then you can also now put in like track notes so we can know a bit about that actual song and what what it means to you or what it's done and what you're what you want to say about it um 
we also did last year, just to quickly mention as well, there was the introducing live lounge on Radio One, which that they're, they're bringing back again this year. So that'll be really exciting. All right. So who at the moment have you been listening to who you, you're thinking, yep, yeah, these are the next X, Y, Z. Who, who's, who's really sparking your interest at the moment? Oh, I am. I've played them for a long time, and I know you're a big fan of them as well. But I feel like people, other people, are starting to know about them. But Crystal Tides, yes. How great are Crystal? How great are Crystal Tides? Yes, they are amazing. Come on, because they've they've just signed, haven't they, to a record label as well, haven't they? Yeah, independent label. Yeah, they they've been working so hard for for years now. Yeah, I and feel that. Yeah, I remember the last time I chatted to. Well, not the last time I chatted to the guys. I think it was at Icebreaker a couple of years ago. And they were saying they're like we're at that point now we're at that age we're like this is kind of almost make or break time like we've been in bands for years yeah. like there's only so much you can push it for and i'm so glad that they got that they got that like sort of push over to kind of help them because yeah crystal type they should be huge yeah like i mean I'd billy's love... voice like yes. pff, what that's insane and their stage presence because obviously they they did your beavis introducing live show at the loft um, yeah, that was even just on like the, on on stage they have that presence of a band that have been going for years and, and they they're comfortable in what they do as well yeah it's tight it's tight as well isn't it they're very um everything they're doing is very tight and it's got a, it, it's got that like instant sort of hit like you that should be on radio one a lot do you know what i mean you'd hear yeah. that and you'd just be like oh yeah singing that all day and yeah, I'd love to see them supporting some really big bands at like Brixton or somewhere like that. I think that's the sort of mm. that they they sort of deserve to be on. That was something that they're so catchy. Like the hooks yeah. that they write are amazing. Because also another one from that BBC Institute uh, gig, which was just presence on stage, was incredible. Was Mulvey? Like, oh my gosh, yeah. My, yeah. I always get his name wrong. I always pronounce it wrong. I say it different every time, but. So, uh, well, do you know what? I've never actually double checked. I've always said Movi, but I hope I hope that's right. If he's listening, we love you, Movi. I actually genuinely, he is the loveliest person as well, and so is his lovely wife Bree. And they've got a real, they've got a real integrity to what they're doing. Like they really believe in like the messages they're putting into the music and the way that they go about things. He's always been passionate about equality in terms of like uh, women and um, women in music and not just on the stage but also behind the scenes as well just yeah really and his stage presence is is such a good performer isn't he yeah I mean that that gig was like we were blown away because he was just it was just him basically and he just controlled the room like everyone was everyone was focused even if you weren't there for him you were yeah. in that moment like there was yeah. no way around it he was like I'm here this is me and then you you were drawn into it, even if you didn't. You, I, I think there was some people see they're supporting their mates' bands or whatever. Who were just yeah. like, wow, like it was in, it was it was amazing. It was intense and just like, <sighs> yeah. Another person actually who's just sprung to mind, um, Hyphen is really great. He's an artist who um, I'm actually the thing I'm going to do in a sec is to have, um, do a chat for Asian Network, and he has been um, introducing Artist of the Week on there. I know he got the sound of on Asian Network actually I think and we've supported him for years and he's again he's got a very strong message in terms of like he's very passionate about mental health and he's very honest in his lyrics and he kind of pulls in different genres like I think he really like there's like a bit of a kind of jazz element and uh hip-hop and pop but, and it's yeah and oh some of his tracks like uh been too long which he released last year in the summer I played that at the hundred actually and he played the hundred as well and it was it was just a perfect song because it was like it's been too long since we've all been allowed to enjoy ourselves it just yeah. captured that moment so brilliantly no again really going back good. to just the power of music just yeah a simple song can can mean so much because yeah. I mean we definitely won't have time to go down this because it's a big 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 thing but like songs that have like a nostalgic memory for you like when you just hear a song it just takes you back to a certain place how many songs of those do you have you're just like yeah that's the, i yeah. know i remember that that exact moment yeah. or whatever yeah totally i always i um so my dad's a, a big music fan my dad's in a, a band and he he 
does it on the side of his his job he's not don't worry he's not like he thinks he's Rod Stewart he actually he actually models himself on Rod <laughs> but he is he isn't Rod I'm afraid but um the music that he 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 was listening to that I then listened to like uh, Fleetwood Mac and Rolling Stones and even I don't know why this has just come into my head but like Hall and Oates as well and those songs that I would listen to in the car with him or um yeah those those songs have got real like they those songs that you might have heard as a child I think take you back don't they yeah I mean I've always got one memory so I'm, I'm assuming your parents if they're big music fans had a record player did you as a kid get to put the record on and choose a record to play sometimes do you know what there's pictures of me they obviously staged looking like this like with these kind of big <laughs> headphones on but I don't actually remember doing the actual record <laughs> bit but I think they had they had their sights on me doing something to do with music but uh, yeah uh, yeah they did have a record player as well yeah well sorry because me and my brother always used to pick up the Wurzels I've got a brand new combine <laughs> halfster because we found the song <laughs> hilarious when we're like seven or eight that song's just funny but I always always just remember going up and just picking up just put it on the record player and put it on so anytime I ever hear that song I was like ah, it's a great little memory <laughs> what a banger i mean it's a very random song to, to to like have in my repertoire but it's quite a great that is a fun song though isn't it like that is just a lot of fun yeah and then the other one which this kind of what got me into i think rock music was my dad was a black sabbath fan so oh, I always so play, my, yeah i always used to play war pigs just because of that and then iron man because i found it funny with the when them go i am iron man i found that hilarious as a kid <laughs> Uh, my dad's got tinnitus from going to black sabbath gigs i think he's like i used to stand right next to the speaker i was like probably wasn't a good idea was it <laughs> no i mean my dad had never seen them so we for father's day bought him tickets for the last ever black sabbath tour a few years wow. ago about five years ago wasn't it i think did they go they got to go oh yeah well, yeah me and me and um, my wife took him oh was he... she'd never seen black sabbath either where was that uh oh two was it amazing? Oh yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen I've seen Black Sabbath a few times. I've basically seen most bands because I went to like Download Festival for about twelve years straight. The most rock bands oh, I've kind of seen in some form. No, that's so good. That's that's I love that commitment. That's good going. Yeah, just don't have a holiday. Have a festival. That was my <laughs> holiday. That is true. That is, but that they're sometimes the best, though, aren't they? The memories from them are just are the best that's made me think actually we got dad tickets one of his favorite bands is the who and we got him tickets and it was just before the pandemic and it hasn't i don't i need to actually follow that up you just reminded me <laughs> what is going on with that <laughs> i don't think they've got those tickets need to do some admin <laughs> i need to see i'm gonna write that down simon the who if you just have a bit of paper that says the who you'll be like what oh. who what <laughs> right i will i will let you go now oh. so yeah, thank you very much steph um for joining us um and yeah if you do want to get involved bb introducing just uh go online bbcintroducing.co.uk no bbc.co.uk forward slash introducing i'll get it right there we go <laughs> thank you simon thank you <laughs> bye